Hi guys, so I am here in Orlando with Paul Barger who I met in Quartzsite, Arizona at the RTR last year and I had done a brief little tour of his step van last year but he had just gotten it and it's now officially a year later so we are going to check back in and see the progress that he's made to his step van and I just want to say these things might have some uh, some new competition with vans in van life this is a step van versus uh, a little small van that you see a lot of people traveling in so I'm gonna show you guys what it's about and hope you enjoy it this on uh, April 20th of 2017. This is a 1989 uh, GMC frame with a Utilimaster body. It's a step van and the whole reason I bought this truck was for the four-cylinder Cummins turbo diesel motor. I've always been into the idea of owning your own home, not making payments, not using credit. And uh, unfortunately, I always lived in horrible debt my whole life and never got out of debt. I think credit has like a negative effect on the mind. Um, so the more you can live without payments, I think the better. So this was my um, attempt at breaking free of a mortgage. Uh, I wanted to have the most amount of room with the least amount of uh, cost and uh, that's why I came up with the step van. When I got this truck, it was a retired bread truck. It was used for delivering bread from the Merida company, and it had steel shelves all throughout. This truck had been sold when they went out of business to another man, and he did home restorations, uh, flipping property, so it was just like a general contractor's work truck. And he ripped all the steel bread delivery shelves out of it and rebuilt with like two by four construction, kind of like this. It had just racks all throughout. And that's how I went on the on the road. It had nothing in here except for like two by four racks. I had in the same location was my bed. It was much narrower when I first left. Uh, it was like eight inches narrower. Um, but it was just based on the rack that had been built for carrying tools and whatever. Went on the road with nothing and I built everything out of reclaimed stuff that I pulled out of dumpsters and recycled and built this uh, as, I, as I went. My first big destination uh, was this RTR. I had never been to one. It's the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous that happens every year in Arizona. And I decided that would be my first big uh, step into the YouTube world and um, you know this van life thing. And so I did a lot of research leading up to that, watched all the videos on YouTube and uh, found out about the RTR, so that was my first place to go. I will definitely be at the RTR this year. I have lots of projects going on and they're all like van life projects. I love campers and uh, Volkswagen buses and um, Class A motorhomes, so I have all sorts of things going on. I need to regroup, kind of get my business together and then I'll be going back out on the road and my first uh, destination for this next year will be the RTR, January 9th. So this is my um, mobile studio, my mobile office. Um, I do a YouTube channel and this is like my video editing laboratory. Uh, I do live streaming from here. This is like kind of like in CV's camper, you know the background that you see her speaking from. This is my station. You'll see this wall um, behind me. So, um, but yeah, this is where I spend a, most of my time. It's solar powered, uh, computer, everything. So. Cool. And then move us on to the closet and what's underneath the closet. So this is part of the rack that was existing in the tr in the truck when I got it. This is the only part that's left of it because I destroyed everything else and rebuilt it. But um, 
what I wanted to do is utilize the space on the wheel well for solar power since it's raised up. So I built this cabinet on the bottom to house my solar system. Um, it has four AGM batteries, a 2000 watt inverter, charger, converter, and a solar controller with 700 watts of solar on the, on the ceiling, on the roof. Um, and the reason I made this a closet over the top of it is I wanted it to be dry. I wouldn't ever want something to be leaking down onto all the electrical components. So I thought the closet would be a good use of this spa space and it kind of breaks the room up. I didn't want a huge, just open room. Um, so this is like my newest addition is my kitchen. Um, the whole time I was on the road, I pretty much didn't have a kitchen. I made things work, I, but I did eat out a lot. But part of this whole thing is getting healthier, being more fit and active, and this is gonna, I'm gonna be doing a lot of juicing, a lot of fresh foods, a lot of plant-based um, stuff in my diet. So this needed to come together. I have food storage up here, uh, a simple burner stove. I have a refrigerator down below. Um, this is just a small refrigerator freezer. Um, right now I have it shut off. I just uh, am doing some work to the truck, so um, getting everything organized for my next time out. So van lifers have this huge thing. I know I've had it in my camper a million times where my cabinets will just open while I'm driving down the road and all my stuff will fall out. And so Paul has created these really cool things that I, I'm just gonna show you really fast. I was gonna have Paul show you, but he's holding the camera now, so I'm just gonna show you. How convenient are these things, man? They just like come out just like that. There's two little notches and they just fit so like, don't open while you're driving down the road. That's the best thing ever. And he's got all his like food and stuff in here. Great storage. And yeah, I'm just, I'm amped on these little wooden blocks, man. On, on the road, it's the simple things. It's the simple things that impress you so much. I'm trying to figure out one for this. Honestly, but, just do a bungee from here to here, a small bungee. Yeah, it just looks, I want it to match. I want yeah, like, to make right. some kind of wooden block that would make sense for this. You might have to like, mount something on the, the side, yeah. and like, Maybe like a little hinge that comes through. You, know, you could just um, put a piece of wood right here with one of those like, you know the bathroom stall blocks? Mm -hmm. And just have it stick out right past there. I thought so about that, I could just it, like hitch it right on here. Yeah, so that when you close, well it could even just sit in front of it. Mm -hmm. so that when it's like locked out this way the metal bar is right there do you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah. yeah instead of drilling into the cabinet but yeah. yeah that's cool make it match but the, these hinges are also spring loaded these were pulled out of a doctor's office dumpster they were re doing this doctor's office and these were all being thrown away so these are actually upside down and they had countertops on the bottoms oh. so this one had a drawer here that would pull out and I cut that whole thing off. I just made it work. The handles are on the top. They're in the right place for this, but they're actually all upside down. Um, but you just make things work. I mean, I saw them, I thought like, these are nice cabinets, you know? Like they're, they're obviously from a doctor's office, you know, but whatever. I can switch out these handles and give them a new look and I actually would have never known. I actually would have never known that they were yeah. from a doctor's office. I think they look great. One of my concepts for building this truck was I would let the trash just dictate what it would look like. And it's coming out way, way prettier than I ever thought it would. Like I didn't think it would come together this nice. Um, I always dreamt of having like a butcher block countertop and I found this in uh, Santa Clara, California. Um, they had an entire Ikea apartment in the trash. So I only picked a couple things out, but um, you can find some amazing stuff. Why send it off to a garbage dump when you can use it for another 10 years, 20 years, who knows? This isn't finished with the construction yet, but this is my bathroom. It'll be a completely private bathroom. The reason I built it this way is I wanted people to be able to use the restroom if we're all hanging out in here. I've had many situations where we had seven people, eight people inside my van when the weather's bad. And it'd be great to be able to discreetly use the restroom and nobody has to end the party, you know? So um, you could go in here. This door that closes off my front hatch, uh, my driver's area is a dual purpose door. This will actually close off the bathroom and you can just close it off this way. Perfect. Yeah. So, um, that's a really good idea. 
in situations like right now I have all the blackout screens up in my driver's area so you can open this door and you're not giving up any privacy you're not alerting people to you living in your truck by opening this door if those screens are up but if they're not up I'm going to have a shower curtain as well where you could just draw a curtain and still use the restroom without giving up your location or that you're inside the truck so stealth is a really really big thing that I considered when building this truck. Up here is the driver's area and I didn't want anything up here that I didn't want to give any hints that somebody was living in here and instead I wanted to work to look like a work truck so um, this is from a business that I used to run I had a tree demolition company so I thought a hard hat on the dash would work well I have a high-vis uh, like, uh, you know, OSHA safety uh, vest over there. Um, I also fly a drone and I use a drone on my uh, YouTube channel. So if I ever get into a place where like I have to go after the drone, I might just wear these things, kind of look like a worker, just to be able to go in and get my stuff and get back out without anybody seeing me. So I'll have a, I have a couple uses for these. But um, then I also have this is just corrugated plastic, like sign material with Reflectix on the outside that blacks everything out, which is kind of nice. A large consideration of my build is my ability to stay places that don't allow people to stay. Um, this is just a big delivery truck and people don't know what to think of it. I park smart. I pull in places that this truck doesn't look out of place at. Any kind of industrial area, any kind of retail zone or food distribution place, you know, strip malls of of all kinds are, are really good. Um, any kind of place that is factory, warehouse, uh, commercial areas like that are great. They have never bothered me. I didn't pay hardly anything at all last year in 10 months while I was on the road. I paid to camp only one time. It cost me $16. That's all I paid to stay in the complete total of the 10 months I was out. So. That's a great thing about this, it's a huge savings. Um, and you know, a lot of times maybe I wasn't staying in the nicest places, parking lots are not that pretty. Um, but next year I'm gonna dig in a little further and get off the pavement a little bit more. When I considered all the factors that go into a van life build, I came up with the step van as being my choice for what I wanted to use. Uh, I think there are a lot of pros to a step van and as far as stealth on the road, I don't think there's a better rig out there that you can uh, get for stealth capabilities and maneuverability through cities and just being able to blend in most places. I think the stealth is the top dog. One of my goals for building this was to be a bit of a sprinter killer. Um, the image you always see on Instagram and social media is that sprinter van that's covered in wood inside and uh, you know, those rigs are not cheap. Way more comfortability um, and more stealth in this vehicle than a Sprinter has for a, a fraction of the cost. This entire build, including the purchase price of the vehicle, totals only $15,000. And I have a little bit of ways to go, but I'm very close to completing this build, and I only have $15,000 in it so far. That doesn't even get you a Sprinter van. One thing that's great about a uh, step van is that this will actually fit in a regular parking space. Some parking lots are a little too tight and I still have trouble getting in there, but most regular parking spaces I can fit in. And a lot of that is due to this door. It slides so it, I don't have to have the room to open it into another car. All I gotta do is just slide it open and I can pull right up next to something really close and not have to worry about clearance and, and that stuff. Perfect. And if I need a passenger, little jump seat for him. It's kind of terrifying to ride in, but it has a seat belt and it's safe. <laughs> <laughs> so this is another one of the projects that I have, I've been working on a little bit. It's a 1976 Toyota Chinook uh, Mini RV. Um, this whole camper area in the back, the top pops up about three feet. You can stand fully in the back of this. It has a stove and a sink 
and a bed. Um, I think it's just an awesome camper and these are known to get 22 miles to the gallon. So this is another project that I'm working on. I absolutely love this thing. It's a 1976 Dodge Titan and it's just a really cool vintage Class A motorhome. It's about the same exact size as my bread truck. This is another thing that I'm really into is vintage Volkswagen buses. I just love them. Um, I brought this one back from Montana. I found this one was when I was out on the road. It is a pop top Westfalia camper. Um, that one's a 1966. And then I also have this one in 1972. It's a Westfalia pop top camper as well. They need work, but these are projects I am in the business of restoring some campers and making them functional again. So um, I'll be fixing these up. I'll be selling some of these projects. I'll be um, also looking for land and hoping to start like a little rental kind of thing. So I don't know. I don't know where it's going to lead to, but I'm just kind of going, <laughs> going with it as it just kind of naturally pans itself out, you know? All right guys, so that concludes this video. I hope that you have enjoyed Paul Barger's tour of his step van. Like I said, I did an update, or this would be the update. I did a video on him last year at the RTR where we met. Clearly he's made a lot of progress since then, and yeah, I think it's really great. So leave comments down below what you think, van or step van, which would you prefer? I prefer step van. What do you think? So <laughs> let us know your opinion in the comments below. Be sure to go subscribe to his channel. He is Paul Barger on YouTube. I will put his link in the description as always. And yeah, we'll see you guys at the RTR. Bye guys. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>